Hey guys, and welcome to How to Gastro. In today's video, we'll be answering a very interesting question, and that is what is an infection? So let's get started. So what does the term infection mean? So an infection occurs when germs gain entry into the patient's body and begin to multiply here, causing inflammation, organ, and tissue damage or disease. So basically, from this definition, we get that infection means there's some sort of pathogen or germ that penetrates the body and gains entry here and actually begins to multiply and in doing so causes inflammation or irritation or damage to a specific area of the body which leads to the onset of a disease. So to be infected means to have germs within the body which are rapidly multiplying. So now that we know what the term infection means, let's take a closer look at some of the pathogenic agents of infection. So what are the most commonly known germs or infectious agents known to man? So the most commonly ones we know are bacteria, viruses, fungi, protozoa, parasites, and prions. And these are all different types of pathogens or infectious agents which can affect the human body and infect it at any given time. So the size of these pathogens may vary in size, shape, function, genetic content, and the manner at which they act upon the body. So in this little image on the top of my screen, we see what the parasites look like. An example of these are helminthines or tapeworms. Then we can also have protozoa. And an example here is the plasmodia species, which are responsible for transmitting diseases such as malaria. We then have fungi, and, and an example of this is the tinea species, and they go on to cause diseases such as athlete's foot. We then have the prokaryotes, and here some of these examples are large species called bacterias. And they go on to cause bacterial infections, and an example of that is leprosy. We then have viruses, such as the HIV virus, which go on to cause the disease AIDS. And then we have the prions, which are also a type of infectious agent, and they go on to produce diseases such as creutzfeldt jakob disease, for example. So now that we know what these infectious agents are, let's take a closer look at the signs and symptoms they may cause. So what are the signs and symptoms of infections? So the signs and symptoms of infection depend greatly on the type of the disease, but the most common signs and symptoms noted during active infections include fatigue, headaches, loss of appetite, weight loss, fevers, night sweats, chills, and aches and pains. Other signs and symptoms may be more specific to an individual body part, such as skin rashes in a skin infection, or coughing and a runny nose in a respiratory tract infection. So the signs and symptoms of an infection depend greatly on the area of the body that's infected, but generally the general signs of infection include chills, sweats, weight loss, fevers, aches and pains, malaise, and loss of appetite. The contagiousness of an infection. So sometimes an infection may be called contagious, and this means that the disease is easily transmissible when an individual comes into contact with an ill person or the ill person's secretions, such as in cases of influenza. So medical isolation here is essential in decreasing the transmission of the disease. So some infections are considered transmissible or communicable diseases with more specialized routes of infection, such as infector transmission in cases of malaria, here we need the female Anopheles mosquito, or in sexual transmission in cases of sexually transmitted diseases, and these patients don't usually require medical isolation. The majority of infectious diseases, however, are transmitted from person to person through direct contact. The types of contact are through person to person and droplet spread, indirect contact such as airborne transmission, contaminated objects, food and drinking water, animal person contact, animal reservoirs, insect bites, and environmental reservoirs are other ways in which infectious diseases can be transmitted. So now let's briefly talk about how one can prevent an infection. So the long list of infectious diseases is complex and convoluted. It's therefore impossible to say that there is a single way to prevent all infectious diseases. But here are a few tips which can be helpful in reducing the risk of transmission. Wash your hands often, especially before and after preparing food and after using the bathroom. Clean the surface areas and avoid leaving room temperature food exposed when cooking. Receive any recommended vaccinations and keep them up to date. Only take antibiotics when prescribed and be sure to complete any recommended course even if symptoms improve earlier than anticipated. 
disinfect rooms where there may be high concentrations of bacteria, such as the kitchen and the bathroom. Practice safe sex by receiving regular STD checks using condoms or abstaining altogether. Avoid sharing personal items such as toothbrushes, combs, razor blades, drinking glasses and kitchen utensils. And follow a doctor's advice about traveling or working when you're ill as this could infect others. So now let's talk about the role of immunity in infections. So our body's immune system helps protect us and fight off disease. Microorganisms and infective pathogens are everywhere on the surfaces we touch, the air we breathe, and even the food we eat. But with all these pathogens around, why aren't we sick every single moment? The answer is, our immune system gives us different types of immunity to protect us from disease. So immunity is an active state of resistance of an organism to any invading biotic or abiotic pathogens and their harmful effects which prevents the development of infection in the body and also maintains the body's integrity by counteracting, neutralizing and clearing the pathogens. So in this little gift that's playing on the top of my screen, we see this little bacteria which is trying to run away from this neutrophil, which is a white blood cell, which is actually counteracting and destroying and neutralizing this pathogenic agent. And in this way, our body to protect us against the development of infections and diseases. So how can we treat infections today? So when an infection hits the body, anti-infective drugs can help to suppress the active infection. Depending on the type of germ or pathogen which attack the body, today we are able to prescribe one of several broad types of anti-infective drugs. Anti-infective drugs may include antibacterial drugs such as antibiotics and anti-tubercular drugs to fight against bacteria causing infections, antiviral drugs to fight against viral causing infections, antifungal drugs to fight against fungal causing infections, and antiparasitic drugs including antiprotozole and anti helminthic agents to fight against parasitic causing infections. So the treatments will also depend on the severity of the infection and the type of infection of course. So some treatments will be administered to be taken orally, some by injection, some by intravenous line, or some to be applied topically, such as a cream. And that brings us to the end of this video on what is an infection. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Hope you found the presentation very interesting and informative. Please make sure to turn on your bell notifications so you'll be notified every time we have a new upload. And if you'd like to download a copy of this presentation, you may do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.